Hey teachers, so we spend a lot of time on this channel covering Google Apps and extensions and all kinds of ways that you can use Google for your teaching. And in today's video, I'm excited to cover a Google related topic that I've been getting a lot of questions about lately, and that is Jamboard. So in this video, I am going to show you how to use all of the different features inside of Jamboard, and then I'm gonna show you some examples of different ways you might use it with your students. So a few weeks ago, I posted a video here on this channel all about ways to get students to show their math work virtually, because that's a big problem that we're running into for virtual teachers, is how do we get students to show their work? That video is linked in the description if you wanna check it out. But one of the uh, programs that I listed in that video was Jamboard. And since I released that video, I have been getting so many questions about Jamboard. A lot of teachers are interested in using it, but they're not really sure what it is or how it works. So if you're unfamiliar, Jamboard is essentially a virtual whiteboard or blackboard, you can change the color of it if you want, that you can use when teaching your students. So it's great for teaching presentations and it's also great for collaborative work, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. So we're gonna jump on my computer. I'm gonna walk you through all of these things, but before we do that, I would appreciate it if you could give this video a big thumbs up and then be sure to subscribe to my channel. After you do that, let's jump on my computer and get started. So first of all, I want to make sure that you know how to get to Jamboard. And what I usually do is just pull up Google and I type Jamboard in. You can see it in my history. Um, and then I just click on it. It's the first thing that comes up. You can also go through your drive. But when you pull up Jamboard, you'll be able to see all of the Jamboards that you've recently created. And if you want to create a new one, you're just gonna click this plus sign in the lower right hand corner. Now the first thing you're gonna wanna do is name your presentation. So I'm just going to say practice jam because this is just gonna have some practice problems. And what I want to do first is I want to walk you through all of the different features. There's not a whole lot, so we can move through these pretty quick. Uh, the first one will just allow you to adjust the size and zoom in and out. Uh, this can be helpful if you have students with IEPs, they need to see things a little bit bigger. You can just play with those settings there. The next one is set background. And you can do a number of different things. You can add dots and use this as grid paper. That's very helpful for math. Uh, they've also got graphing paper, which can be helpful for math as well. Here's lined paper. You can also just have a blackboard if you want that. But I really like some of these graphing and lined papers because this looks like what students actually see. I'm just gonna keep it white right now. Now when it comes to the background, Jamboard recently added a new feature that I also wanna show you, and this is the add an image feature. And let's say I want to add an image to this and lock it down, so then maybe students can label it or do different things with it. What I first wanna do is I wanna find the image that I am going to use, and I'm gonna save it to my computer. So I have found this water cycle image here. I'm gonna use this in a presentation for science, and I'm going to save this image as either a JPEG or a PNG, and then I am going to upload it inside of Jamboard. Okay, and you will notice that when I upload this picture, I'm clicking on it right now, and I can't drag and drop this anywhere. So that's why this feature is really helpful because students can't drag and drop it when they interact with it. Previously, like just a few weeks ago, there was no way for you to lock images down. So this is really helpful. Now you can also clear the frame and that's gonna get, when you click on this, so let me just click on the pen tool just to show you. If I click clear frame, it will get rid of anything that you've drawn on or add it to the frame. It's not gonna get rid of anything that you've locked down though, like this water cycle image. Okay, so now that we've gone through all of these here at the top, let's go through the side. I just showed you the pen tool a little bit. And what's cool about this is you can change the colors, you can change the type of pen. So there's the pen, the marker, the highlighter, and the brush. The highlighter's fun if you just wanna highlight certain types of information. 
and you can really just play with this. Um, this is a great way to have students model math problems and things like that. The next one is your eraser. So you can use this to erase anything that's there if you just want to erase a little bit. If you want to erase everything you've added to the slide, I suggest you just click clear frame because it's going to save you a lot of time. Now the next one is one that I love a lot. This is the sticky note and what you can do, the, do with this is you can add notes to it. So I can say rain, sleet, hail, or snow. I can also change the background of my sticky note. I can save it. When I'm done, I just click cancel. And now I can click and drag this sticky note next to precipitation to show the different types of precipitation. The next one is add an image. And this is gonna, you're gonna go through the same steps like you did for changing the background. The only difference is if you add an image this way, students will be able to drag and drop it. So if you want to lock down an image, you need to go through set background. But if you want an image that students can drag and drop, you're gonna click on this add image button. Then we have the shapes tool. And you'll see there's several different shapes here that you can choose from. If I want to circle part of the water cycle, I can do that and then you can change the background, I just made it transparent. We can change the colors. You can also change uh, the line around it. There's lots of different things that you can do with the shapes tools. The shapes tools are also really great for creating graphic organizers. The only thing to keep in mind with these is remember everything over here is draggable. So if you do create a graphic organizer, just keep in mind that students will be able to drag it. So you just wanna give them a little pep talk ahead of time, letting them know don't drag and drop these things. And another thing I wanna show you real quick, anytime you add shapes, you add text, you add a sticky note, you should see these three little dots when you click on it. And this will allow you to duplicate. So if I want several of these and I want them to be exactly the same, I can duplicate them. Another thing that's helpful is you can also order so if you have a lot of things on this slide and you maybe want to send that circle backwards or forwards, you can organize the order of everything as well. The next thing we have over here is the text box. And so I am just going to click on the text box and then click where I want to add text. So we can say, I'm just quickly going to put forms, clouds, and when you have text, you can come up here, you can change the size of it to make it really big, however you want. Um, you can also change the color. Keep in mind that when you are working here in Jamboard, you're not going to have all of the font options that you are gonna have when you're working in other Google programs. Um, and I can also change the alignment of this. The very last thing you're gonna see on your toolbar over here, this is the laser. And where this is helpful is if I were using this slide to teach my students whether live or if I was recording a screen capture of my screen and using this, this is the laser. So you can see when I click, you can see that a circle forms, but it doesn't stay up there permanently. So if I'm explaining each part of the water cycle, I can circle what I want them to look at, but then it's gonna disappear so it's not overly distracting. It just catches their attention and then it allows you to move along. Now, one of the reasons why I like using Jamboard for presentations when I'm teaching students compared to Google Slides and things like that is because I can make it a little bit more interactive when I'm going through it. Uh, in Google Slides, you know, once you share that presentation, unless they're looking at it in editing mode, they can't interact with it too much. Oh, and one other thing that I want to show you, I forgot to show you up here at the top. If you want to create another slide, just click the arrow and it will automatically add another one. If you get to a point where there's a whole bunch up here, you can just click on this and then click. It will show you all of the ones you have so far and go exactly to the one that you want to go to.
Okay, so now since you've learned how to use all of the different settings in Jamboard, we're going to go through, I've made several different examples of ways that you can be using this with your students. So let's take a look at some of those. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to show you some of the different types of jams you can create that are a little more interactive so that way you and students can interact with each other. So I'm going to go back to my Jamboard homepage by clicking the icon up here. And I have a few that I've already created. And so I'm going to click on this math problems one. And a few weeks ago, I released a video with some of the best ways to get your students to show their math work virtually. That video is listed in the description if you want to check it out. But this is a problem a lot of teachers are having right now is how do we get students to show their work so that we can help them if they're struggling in math. And Jamboard is one of the options that I listed in that video, and it's one of the best ways, in my opinion. So you can see that I have already set up this slide with a multiplication problem, and in this box, there's a space for students to actually solve. So they can write out the problem and actually solve it here. I can see the steps that they take to solve it. And then one thing that I like to do as well, it's obviously not required, but I always like students to explain in writing or in words how they found their answer as well. I think that helps with retention. So this is a great way to get your students to show their work. And another great thing with Jamboard as well is you could interact with students live in this presentation. So let's say you have a student that contacts you, they're like, I'm really struggling with multiplication. You can get on with them through Zoom or even just like a messenger program. However you interact with students, send them a link to a Jamboard with the problem. Both you and the student can log into this Jamboard at the same time they can solve the problem like I'm kind of showing you right here using the pen and you can watch them as they go through. So you can see them making mistakes live. Keep in mind there's a little bit of a delay, but it is a great way to watch your students as they're thinking through a problem. Okay, another example of an interactive math problem you could have, this is circle the quadrilateral. So once again, the student would use the pen tool and they're gonna go through circle the quadrilaterals and then explain how you know the circled shapes are quadrilaterals. So they'll just click down here and they'll type it out. I know this because, and they can change their fonts and everything up here to make it fit. But there is another type of activity you can do with students. All right, I'm gonna go back to my Jamboard home again. I wanna show you some ideas for social studies so this is a presentation I made with some American Revolution ideas. So this is a map that I found with the 13 colonies and what I did since this is already numbered, I went through, listed those numbers here and now students can just click and they're gonna type in the names of each of those colonies. And then this is one thing that I love to do, especially if you have a lot of students live and interacting at the same time, we can do a box where you have reasons to declare independence and then tell each student to create a sticky note with a reason. So the student can write their response save it and drag their response to the box. And so you can have a lot of students interacting with this and dragging their responses at the same time and then you can go over all of the responses together. Now these are just a few of the different types of activities that you can do with students inside of Jamboard and the last thing that I want to show you is how to share with students. You're pretty much going to share this the same way that you would share any other Google resource. So you're just going to click on share up here if you want to share it with the entire class at one time, just click on uh, to change the settings and make sure anyone with the link can view it and then you can send this link out to your students, whether through email, whether posting it in an LMS, whether sharing it in your Zoom chat, whatever you wanna do, you can share the link that way. If you want to share it with only certain students, you can keep this on restricted so that only people at it can view. 
and then you would just type in the email addresses of the specific students that you want to share it with. Now, one other option would be to share it through Google Classroom, and if you do that, you're just gonna wanna change that anyone with the link can view, and you'll also want to decide whether they can view or edit it. So if you just want them to view the presentation, they're gonna be a viewer. If you want them to be able to edit, you're gonna change it to editor. And make sure that this is turned on, and then you'll just go into Google Classroom and you'll share it the same way that you would share any other assignment inside of Google Classroom. So if you've made it to the end of this tutorial, hopefully you now feel confident about using Jamboard and you have some ideas for how you can start using it with your students. And I would love to hear from you. If you've used Jamboard before, or maybe you haven't used it yet, but you've been thinking about ways that you can start using it, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let us know how you plan to use this with your students. It's a great way uh, just to share ideas and get inspiration from other educators. Then once you're finished doing that, give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel. It definitely helps this channel to grow and it makes sure that you are always notified when the latest videos are released here on my channel. So until next time, happy teaching.